Hello. Hi. What do I look like? I can't see myself. I can't see you either. Hi. Yay. How are you? Hi. It's the real <laughs> Molly. Nice to meet you. Hi, Molly. Great to see you. Great to see you. Well, I'm glad <laughs> we get to talk. I um, This has been so fun following your journey, first off, um, to meet someone else in the space that is doing something kind of, you know, edgy, little risque, putting your life out in the open. I think it's kind of cool. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you. I actually haven't had a chance to explore all of your stuff yet because I'm a little overwhelmed with my stuff because I'm so new to this. Yeah, it's um, okay. So I just have, I don't have any free time lately. That's all right. Oh. I know it does definitely keep you busy. Like if you were worried about not dating or something and, and <laughs> twiddling your thumbs, well, just start a podcast, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> then you will be busy. Okay. It's okay. So, you know, if you're at a party, how would you introduce yourself, Molly? <laughs> To a stranger, I would have a hard time doing it without the help of another person. But hey, I'm Molly Hockey. Um, yeah, what what else would you say? <laughs> I don't know where you live or how old you uh, are. Or, you know, some of those key things. Um, uh, Molly Hockey. I'm 39, soon to be 40, very soon to be 40. Single. Looking for sperm, <laughs> Clearly. but I might not say that first thing at a party. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so how did you embark on this whole journey? I know you froze your eggs, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I decided to freeze my eggs when I was um, when I was 36, and then it actually happened uh, when I right after I turned 37. Um, I think I went about it the right way. I mean, aside from doing it, you know, I, maybe I should have done it younger. Um, but it didn't really occur to me. But once it was time, I ended up um, doing like three consultations with different doctors, even though I had to pay for them because I knew I was going to spend all this money and all this time and energy. And I knew this was an investment in my future. Uh, and so uh, I interviewed three different doctors and chose the one that I felt like was the most wasn't trying to get money out of me. Like she was like, oh, no, we should wait until you're, it doesn't matter that your 37th birthday is coming. It, it, a couple of months isn't going to make a difference. We should, you know, you, we should help uh, fix your diet and um, get you some acupuncture and, you know, just try and get my eggs in the right place. Mm -hmm. and or the right size or, you know, mm -hmm. you know more about these words than I do. Um, and then, and then I did the whole procedure, and it was great. It was life-changing for me. So tell us a little bit about that, um, mm -hmm. because I actually feel like I had the exact same experience or a similar experience that you described, mm -hmm. but I also feel like I know you a little bit better because I've listened to some of your podcasts and heard yeah. you talk about um, on Spermcast, your podcast, about how you know you went through this new revelation of creativity, yeah, um, I think my whole life, so I live in Los Angeles, I'm an actor, I um, have been, I'm a struggling actor, and I have been pushing it and pushing it and pushing it for 15 years, and um, trying my hardest, and at the same time, trying to find love, and always assuming that I would have a, and going you on know, the Bachelor. A, a but I didn't actually go on The Bachelor. Oh, <laughs> I thought you did. No, so so I think that you might have emailed me about that, and I haven't gotten back to it because I've had I have so many things happening right now. But um, no, I I edited myself into The Bachelor and tricked all of America. <laughs> wow, now that's so this, creative. Yes, thank you. So, I thought you know you're rubbing shoulders with Chris Harrison, and and this nope. was your peeps. Nope. <laughs> So, okay, so what happened was after I froze my eggs, I suddenly felt relieved of all this pressure in my life to find a man. And I was suddenly, I felt more like myself than I'd ever been. I didn't have to be pretty anymore. And I could make fun of myself and make fun of being, you know, quote unquote old at 37. And so I, I edited myself into The Bachelor as the oldest contestant in Bachelor history. Yeah, I know. I was like, 37? Normally they don't have 37 year olds on <laughs> The Bachelor. Yeah. I also wrote that I was a retired actress, which I'm not retired. <laughs> um, and, you know, by doing that, I was able to like make fun of the show in so many ways. I mean, I love the show. It's garbage, but I do love it. And, um, but I was able to make fun of all the tropes and, um, 
you know, I without, don't know. without having to buy all the dresses and be ready for right. all the cocktail parties and the, Absolutely. Ooh, is he going to pick me? Yeah. I didn't actually have to go on the show. Although like it being, doing that made me feel like I wanted to be on the show just because I thought it would be so funny. It would um, be really funny. Now we need <laughs> to call them ABC. Are you listening? <laughs> I, they were they were aware of me actually I was they pitched me in the room um for the um after the final rose they 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 were talking about getting me on the show but they thought I was like gonna like be too wild and crazy oh, <laughs> they thought you were gonna wanna, like ruin it yeah they thought yeah they were just unsure of me um but that went viral and for a little bit and I got a lot of uh, I got a lot of work out of it and my career had a huge boost because of it and um, I edited, edited myself into the whole season and I ended up getting TV um, a, a job on TV writing some other stuff that I edited myself into and and then performing in that and working with Comedy Central and uh, yeah it was just all a wonderful experience and and I don't think that would have happened if I wasn't relieved of that pressure to have kids at that moment. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. The other so, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I was just going to say the, the other thing that it did for me was to relieve the pressure uh, that I put on relationships. Mm -hmm. Because when you enter into a relationship uh, thinking like, is this my baby daddy? You know, you don't ever actually get to a point where you can actually just look at that person for that person and accelerates Whatever. things right it it like launches you into this trajectory yeah. of oh this is what our kids would look like and this is what our house and home would be and yeah. this is where yeah. I would go to school yeah you can enjoy the present moment right um yeah that's a good point <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it worked for me because here I am I'm almost 40 and I still haven't found the man but I've had a lot more fun well, I think a lot of people are in our shoes, though, because, like, yeah. I think dating has changed. We don't look at romance the same way like they did, like, our grandparents' age. Like, yeah. your parents have been together for a long time, so of mine. Yeah. You, they just celebrated, what, their 50th? 50, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a long time. My parents are 40-plus, and my yeah. grandparents are 93 years old, so they've been together for 60, 70 years, you know? Wow. wow. But, but you don't see that very often anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We, it's a, just a totally different landscape now. It is. It's, and it's hard to na navigate it. We're pioneer women. Yes. Uh, we're on the frontier. <laughs> but I was really <laughs> thankful for egg freezing. Were you thankful for egg freezing? Like, not only just because of what it did for your career, but like now yeah. it, it bought you some time. I'm very thankful for it. I, um, yeah, I actually never thought I would get to this point where I would be looking for a sperm donor. And now I'm so thankful that I have those eggs um, because at almost 40, what is my, my, the likelihood of getting pregnant naturally is what, 5% at 40? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it's between 3 um, and 5%. Mm -hmm. It's just about our egg quality. Mm -hmm. It gets older as we age. Yeah. And there's a lot of lifestyle factors that can affect that too. So if you're a heavy smoker, for example, that will just kill your egg supply like overnight. Really? Oh, yeah. I had some years back in my 20s when I was a big smoker. Not a heavy smoker, but yeah, not so a long those, time. So those things, you know, obviously are the given that aren't probably good for you. But, yeah. So, so you've been looking into sperm doning, obviously. You are interviewing people that you know. Have right. you, and, and you didn't go down the sperm donation route yet, like at a bank. Right. Haven't done that yet. It's not off the table. It's just for the sake of my podcast. Um, it's more at this point, just an exploration of my options and a discussion. And uh, I'm sort of looking for some personal growth as well as interviewing people. And it's, you know, obviously it's easier to start with people, you know, than people you've never met before, because how are you going to contact somebody you've never heard of? Um, but I am just now starting to get some emails from people who want to be sperm donors. Really? <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're going to get solicited. Yes, I just got an email from somebody who sounds absolutely magical. It's so funny. <laughs> what is, uh, like, what would you put somebody in that category? What, who's magical? Like, well, I read the email so quickly. I literally just read it about an hour ago and I was like out walking. Um, sum it he up. He just for sounds, us. he just sounds, say, sum it up. He just sounds like so 
smart and kind and healthy and um, he didn't tell me about his family history. What? Where does he live? He lives in my town. So I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't know. We've never met. Yeah. Yeah. So now are you, but he sounds great. Are you um, educated on some of like the legal aspirations that you might need to embark on? And yeah, a little bit. I've, I've spoken with a family lawyer um, and she told me all about sperm donor contracts and um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I haven't gotten really into depth with it because I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. But God well, if you think- ever need recommendations, I know some um, great fertility focused lawyers that do this okay. on a regular basis. So actually, like, for example, I have a trust for my eggs. So if anything were to happen to me, um, I have like my will and testimony that I want what I want to happen to my eggs, not just what the clinic thinks that their paperwork says that they want to happen to my eggs. So I have like a, a contract basically. Or if you right. ever move your eggs off site and put them in long term storage, for example, which it sounds like you might use yours pretty soon. So that may or not be like an option for you. But, um, but yeah, so you can, you can then give all of those instructions to whoever is interested with your eggs. Got you. So I, I'm curious what you what what would happen to your eggs? Well, I chose to donate them to research and science. Interesting, yeah. But yeah. more recently, like um, I was actually chatting with my sister. I have a, a sister that's 18 months younger, and um, she has not frozen her eggs. Now I've done it twice, so I'm mm. a little like committed, and I might even do it again, and then this wow. time make it embryos. But right. Uh, right now, I have just about under 30 eggs. How many do, eggs do you have? 16. Okay, that's good. Sweet 16. <laughs> do you know the statistics but, of eggs? No, why don't you tell me? I'm okay. nervous. No, don't be nervous. So each egg has between 2 and 12% chance of turning into a live birth. Now, there's a lot of steps that get you to a live birth, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, if you think about every dozen eggs or so, then that equals a live birth or a human. So you have like okay. 1.3. There's actually calculators online. I can send you some links. They're really fun. Really? Um, yeah, because you put in your age oh and you do the calculation uh-huh. of how many eggs you got. And it gives you a percentage of this would be the percentage for having one baby. This would be a percentage of having two babies out of this. Yeah. It would be having three babies. Yeah. Okay. So wow. based on your family planning is how many eggs you know you need to collect. Yeah. <laughs> so probably uh so probably a one family home i mean a one baby home <laughs> yeah but we'll see oh i don't know it's just very it's very scary uh, i don't have i'm really happy i did this but i um i'm also scared it's not gonna work mm-hmm. yeah well you could always do it again i would actually recommend freezing really? oh my god i have no money well, you know what? There's like all of these new startup programs that are coming and popping up that are mm-hmm. fertility focused, like loans. And it's kind of like a car payment mm-hmm. um, that you can make without like going into debt. And some of the clinics are now even like maybe if you went back to your original clinic and been like, hey, listen, I think, you know, for best odds, because they want good numbers too with their mm-hmm. with their clinic. So they would invest in you, you know, mm-hmm. you go back and be like, hey, do you think? We could do another round and maybe a discount because I already did this with you. Mm-hmm. And it's like multi-round cycles in the clinic. Mm. Okay. Know. If you don't ask, you don't get. So I just always recommend that you kind of be your own advocate. Yeah. And, um, and there's really great drug discounts like on my website, experience.com. Amazing. You, you can go on there and you'll learn all the tips and tricks on how to get the hormones at the pharmacy for less. Wow. Yeah, like there's You know what eggs, I did for what? my eggs? I bought my I bought some of the hormones from another couple that yeah. had that was done with them that didn't need them because they they did IUI. Cool. And um yeah, but yeah. they had a successful I, IUI. Very so, nice. very very yeah. Neat. yeah, I mean there's always like leftover medications that maybe somebody else's insurance paid for or something and then they are happy to donate or help you know, help somebody else that maybe is a little more indigent or in need or, um, Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So, uh, how old are you? I'm 35. I'll be 36 uh, 
about in two months or so. And who's em- how would you make these embryos? You have a man? Nope. I don't have a partner, a parenting partner yet. Uh-huh. But um, but I'm looking for one. We'll see. Maybe someday. But, you know, I have all the eggs in storage. And then maybe what I might do, like maybe for like my 39th birthday or my 40th birthday, I might do the egg freezing again, bank half of the eggs, and then make the other half embryos just to see like how is the egg quality. Because the thing yeah. is with egg quality, you can't tell until you inseminate yeah. them with sperm. And then it's always the factor of the DNA of the sperm. How good is the sperm? So you could. So I need to use the best possible sperm ever to make sure that my sixteen eggs are going to be taken care of. I can't use any bunk sperm. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say that you want to get all the factors taken out. Right? You want to like yeah. eliminate all those risk factors because then it gives you a better chance of your DNA turning into embryos. Yeah. Together. It's a combo yeah. factor, right? So you have to have yeah. good egg quality. And a lot of times we overlook sperm, but sperm really can have some factors in it that are not appealing for embryo development. Yeah. And uh, if you get the best one, you know, when they do ICSI, which is um, in, in insemination in the, in the egg, they mm-hmm. inject the sperm into the egg, and then that helps fertilize it. But not yeah. all of those are going to turn. It's a numbers game. I always call it egg math mm-hmm. because it's not like you know um, how many of those are going to turn into humans or potential life, right? Yeah. Yeah. How often do they do ICSI rather than just putting sperm in an egg in a Petri dish? Well, it's up to you. Some people do 100% ICSI. Some people look at it and they say, oh, I want, you know, natural selection. So let's just, because when you, when you pick a sperm, you're essentially picking the DNA of that child and the sex of the child. So when they do like chromosomal testing or what they call um, PGS or PGD, that will um, basically, you know, it can know the XY chromosomes. They'll know is there any genetic deformities. You'll know what grade that embryo is. And you can kind of rank them and then be like, okay, what's my best chance for success? Let's put in that embryo first. Mm -hmm. And a lot of clinics will also have guarantees on uh, that if you do one embryo transfer at a time, like if you don't get pregnant, then maybe they'll help you with the second one. Because what they want to avoid is, okay, so like your risks um, for having twins go up when you put multiple eggs or embryos, I'm sorry, when you put multiple embryos in the same and the same time and the transfer, but mm-hmm. it increases your odds of getting pregnant. So let's say your odds were uh, 55, 57% to put in one embryo. If you put in two, your odds go up to like, let's say 69% or 70 or whatever. You know, like it goes up quite a bit, but your risk factor for having twins also doubles. Yeah. Um. But isn't, okay, so I thought I read a stat last week that IVF, um, that the success rate for IVF is like 13 to 18% for women in their 40s. Is that? Well, using their own eggs, but you have frozen eggs that are 37, so. Oh, so basically I'm 37? Yeah, you're forever 37. <laughs> okay. You know, that should be that like helps. your new. That helps. Yeah, it should be like your new um, podcast label. Forever yeah. thirty seven. <laughs> You're really Maybe not that's the 40. title of the episode. Yeah, yeah, exactly, not- exactly. But um, you know, they do like forever twenty one, and you're really just forever thirty seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, so it's a little misleading because you know I don't know how your sex ed education was in schools, but most sex ed kind of sucks in school. Yeah, it's pretty and they, like basic, right? And yeah. and elementary, and they treat you like you're. Like you don't understand biology, but um, women are born with all the eggs that we have. Men make sperm every three months, so they can change their sperm quality. Women, we can't, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But just because your eggs get old doesn't mean you can't carry a pregnancy. So your uterus is actually very, uh, very plausible and can can carry. That's why you're seeing like Janet Jackson at 50 having a baby or some of these celebrities, you know. That, yeah. that, I mean, how many times have they said Jennifer Anderson's pregnant, right? 
So <laughs> poor Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Maybe she doesn't want kids. Or maybe it's just personal and, and the person you meet would make you want kids, you know, like, yeah, a lot of people are on the fence. Like I could totally be on the fence and look, yeah. I froze my eggs twice and maybe do it a third time. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So it's so do hard you, to know. Do you have a plan? Well, you said you might freeze embryos at 39 or 40. At what point do you think you would just say, forget about it and, uh, and do it on your own? Do you think you would? I don't know. Do you think you would? I'm going to. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like I say I, I do, but I don't know. Like it's still five years, four years away. And so a lot can happen yeah. in four years or nothing could change in four years. Like, like nothing has changed in two years. Right. <laughs> it's know? so weird. Isn't it? I think you go through highs and lows, right? Like it's not that you're never in a relationship or meet people that you want to date maybe, right? But about them ending to the end goal of parenthood is a totally different ball game. Yeah. It's a yeah. different it's a different ask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could date anyone and really like them, right? But then maybe not want to plan a life together or like getting old together. I don't know. Yeah. Or it just doesn't work out. Yeah. Or it just doesn't I work out. Yeah. There's no planning any of it. Well, there's some planning, but there's no planning the love part. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's so many, there's so many different things at all times. Uh, there's so much information about this subject mm -hmm. and people really of, don't talk about it. No, they don't. And that's kind of like part of the reason I wanted to start talking about it is because yeah. uh, I think that it's a highly more emotional than we lead on to believe. We think, mm -hmm. oh, it's just two weeks. You're on hormones. And then you freeze your eggs and you're done. Well, no, now I'm, now I'm thinking about how I have DNA in the freezer and how, what does this mean? And uh, am I more calm dating? I don't know. So you'd have to ask all the people I dated, right? Right. Yeah. Or am I, or am I more focused to the goal? And now I'm qualifying every date and saying, Hmm, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like how do is you he feel? worthy? Yeah. Is he, is he worthy? The new sponge worthy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. Well, and yeah. I actually fight. I don't know if you're going to fight this, um, but when you Google someone's name on the internet, have you ever like looked up your name? Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> now Spermcast is going to come up for you, right? Yes. And I wonder what that makes the opposite sex think about. Like, do they think that you're trying to trap a man? Do they think like you're sperm crazy? Do they think? Yeah. Uh, I wonder, cause I am, you know, I'm on, I'm on Tinder and Bumble. And, um, the other day I went on a date with somebody and I don't have any of my private information except from the college that I went to up on, you know, those apps. And I went in there and, and he knew all about me, but he saw all the bachelor stuff and he thought I'd been on the bachelor. He didn't even see the sperm cast stuff. Oh. So, I mean, I've already got all that stuff out there on the internet and I don't really care. <laughs> I think for me, I think that ha deciding to have a baby by myself has made me, um, I think it'll be easier for me to date once I have a baby because I won't have to have, there will be zero pressure on that person and I, I am who I am and they're going to like me that way or they're not. And so like they're going to take you either with all of your package goods and what you're bringing to the table or it's just not, that's not what they're up for. So you're, yeah, I see what you yeah. mean. I don't think I'm going to be less desirable as a single, single mother. I don't mother. think so either. I think I'm going to be more desirable because I'm not going to be putting that pressure on anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Or they might have a blended family to mix with yours. Exactly. Yeah. And now it's just really nice and genuine. Isn't it funny how we go through these different stages in life and you feel like either more like you, you go to these different areas of time, right? And you're like, wow, I was really career driven at that age. And now I'm family focused. And now I feel like I'm enjoying life. Like it's kind of funny. Yeah. We can't yeah. sort of have it all at the same time. Yeah. I guess cause you learn from each of those chunks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready to just be old and on a couch. <laughs>
<laughs> With I don't a man know. And a child. I think you're kind of funny. I don't know that you'll ever just be like on a couch, be bop, be and being boring. I think that you kind of like you spice it up. But oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I just want to chill. But yeah, okay, yeah. But we're also putting a lot on our plates too. You know what I mean? We like, are. We are. So yeah. Like yeah. Well, I think that. I'm going to go back to my fertility clinic and just and have my fertility tested to see if I could do it naturally or, you know, with um, a home insemination kit before I use the eggs just to try it. Yeah. <laughs> um, because so money. What, so what you'll want to do is the most important part is you'll want the sperm donation to be make sure that they have their STD, SDI tests. Because you don't want to inseminate yourself with sperm that may be infected. Because that would yeah. be a life longer problem than that. So when you're when you're talking about known donors, which is what you're what most of the people that you're interviewing on your podcast yeah. on Spermcast, it yeah. is are there they would be under the known donor category. And here's a fact that you may not know, but most clinics will actually ask that your sperm donor, if you're doing IVF together and you're not together as a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, they'll ask you to have that, that donor come in, produce a sample, and then six months later, it's called being quarantined, and then come back, and then mm. you can do it with your eggs. So that, yeah. that's a delayed time zone, you know, timing factor if you're not prepared for it. That's something yeah. a lot of clinics will ask for because in fact, Do they insist on it? A lot of them do. Some will weave it, but I mean, just, just anticipate that that's probably something that they'll say mm -hmm. or want. Um, it, but yeah, I mean, there's always exceptions to every rule, right? Yeah. I mean, I do plan on having everybody, uh, having blood work done for everybody. Um, just also to, to find out if they are, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> to like, find out if they're a carrier of any genetic yeah, diseases. Yeah. So there's, um, there's a test out there that can run a computer algorithm They'll take your DNA as the female and the male DNA of a man, and they run a computer algorithm tons of different ways, and they create fictitious babies that you could potentially have. Uh -huh. it, it's a startup company. It's kind of new. but And then they'll tell you what your percentage of risk is for, like you have cystic fibrosis, right? They'll tell you yeah. what your risk is that an embryo will have that. And then yeah. you'll know whether or not you want to match with that partner when you're talking about donations. Yeah. Either egg or sperm. It's kind of so new technology. Yeah, that's wild. Can you send me information on that too? Sure. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like PGS and PGD testing where you have to pay extra for that. Um, I don't know what those are specifically. Is that kind of like what I did with counsel? Have you heard of counsel? So that is genetic screening on yourself. So you, uh -huh. to, but when you do PGS, PGD, it, it, um, it's the pre genesis of the embryo. So what they do is they take a cell out of the embryo that you just created. So the embryos will usually be in the incubator when they turn into oh, blastocysts for yes. five days, three to five mm -hmm. days. Sometimes they go to day six and that blastocyst, mm -hmm. they'll take a little cell out. They'll, they'll use a little needle and pull a little cell out and they'll test that one cell. Now just keep in mind that that doesn't mean everything. It's just, you know, they pulled out one cell. If they had pulled out a different cell, they could have got a different result, right? So, um, you know, they don't want to risk ruining the embryo, so they right. don't want to pull out too many cells, but it gives you an idea how quality level that embryo could be. And then that helps with your implantation rates. So we know how to line your uterus and how to prepare for the hormones on that. And then when you do your transfer day, everything will go smooth and hopefully it'll be like, you know, it'll be like a little sand of grass or, or, or sand of um, uh, attaching to your wall, which is kind of like peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Well, I do love peanut butter though. A lot of people get really <laughs> freaked out that once they have their insemination that, they're, that the embryo is going to fall out of them. And what you need to um. realize is that it's so microscopic. It's actually smaller. The egg is the largest cell in our body, but it's yes. the embryo is smaller than a than a you know a slice of your hair, so yeah. it's very very tiny. And the body has this way of you know keeping everything just nice and neat up there. If it, it's either going to take an implant in the wall or it's not. So like some people that have PCOS or endometriosis, they have a harder time getting pregnant because their endometrial lining isn't very thick, 
And for implantation, you want it to be thick as thieves. Mm. Wow. Um, you just reminded me of a question I have, actually. A friend of mine just got diagnosed with breast cancer. And, you know, she's going to be okay, hopefully. But she's going to need... Um, She's going to need a double mastectomy because she has um, BRCA. Oh, BRCA. Yeah. And um, she's going to need a double mastectomy and um, and possibly chemo and radiation. And she hasn't frozen her eggs. Um, have you done interviews with people about this before? Yeah, my yeah. last podcast was just about this. So, okay, so um, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll refer her to it. Yeah, so they can um, do a fast cycle now and freeze some eggs before she has chemo. She can actually have – so I work in breast cancer too. So okay. what they can do is they can have the surgery and then just not do any of the chemo and radiation until after she has egg freezing. Or she can do yeah. it now before surgery because it's a kind of an emotional thing too, to, especially when you're getting mastectomy. And then yeah, there may be reconstruction. I don't know how young she is. But, yeah. Um, you know, like She's 36. The, oh, that's very young. Okay. Yeah, and there should be cryopreservation. So there should be coverage that – you can get because of um, chemo and radiation and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever heard of people removing their ovaries and then having them implanted back in them later? So you're talking about um, ovarian tissue where they remove it and they use the cells that are in the ovarian tissue to implant back like egg production. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a little bit more of an invasive. They don't take out the entire ovary. What they do is they take out a section or a slice of it, and uh -huh. then they put it back in. And, I mean, that would be more of an extreme choice. And is that people do that for this reason? I haven't asked her about it at all. I just I um, It's just probably curious. more common in cancer, but honestly, egg freezing is the best choice because it's known eggs. You don't know how well that tissue is going to come back. After, but anything that's frozen, it's like frozen in time. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we could talk for days on all this stuff. <sighs> I mean, it's just, there's just, it's a very pregnant subject. Yes. Pardon is. the pun, but I did it on purpose. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stupid. Um, well, everyone needs to check out your podcast and I think uh, I think you're you're pretty regular on it. You plan on keeping it up, or yeah, every Tuesday uh, until I can't anymore. <laughs> Although maybe I might take a little break. Maybe I'll have a season one and season two, you know. But um, but yeah, I don't have any Should plans. Should we play not... your song because it's so catchy? I've been singing it all day. <laughs> I love my song. Yeah, you have it on pre-record. Can you hit play, or should I dial oh, it gosh. up? Um, I could do something here. I don't know if it would play out loud on my computer because... Here, I got it. Okay. I think. It's my favorite part. Guys. Pretty awesome. <laughs> how how do you do all yeah. of that? I have some talented friends. <laughs> do you like country? I, have, I do like country. Yeah, I'm I, like I, a, a I like folk twang. music. But say again. <laughs> I see a little country twang to it. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I had I had that in mind. That's what I had in mind, and my my friends helped me realize it, and that's pretty great. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we should Thank catch you. up again soon. Great yes, talking to you. Yes, should. About I think I'll be in touch. I am going to have a lot of questions for you. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Let's this talk soon. Bye. Bye.